So Gerald McCoy is now a Raider, and honestly, that just kind of feels right in a weird way, even though obviously he played for Tampa Bay for so long, but I kind of just feel like, yeah, like he, him being a Raider, it just fits, and maybe it's similar to how Warren Sapp, of course, uh, took the same route, uh, you know, uh, this time McCoy had a couple teams in between, but still pretty interesting, and you know what, I actually kind of like this signing a, a lot, I think it's a really good flyer on a guy, and it's a position of weakness for the Raiders, so he actually could get some playing time, and I have to say, I do think that, you know, there's a lot of talk about, oh, this would have been a great signing in 2013 kind of stuff, but I don't think it's horrible now. I mean, he was legitimately good in 2019, his last year with the Panthers. Now, he missed all of last season with an injury, so how well is he going to come back? He is 33 years old. Those are the questions we're going to have to wait and see. So that's why it's more of a flyer. That's why uh, you know he won't be getting paid as much. But if you think about it, he was in the same draft as Sue, and Sue is getting paid a bunch of money for Tampa Bay, and no one has an issue with that. So I could easily see McCoy doing well. I mean, if you look at just by the numbers in 2019, he had... Uh, 37 combined tackles and five sacks. And if you take out the this, this season where he was injured for most of it, he only averages uh, 35.9 tackles and six and a half sacks. So he's right around his average uh, for those years. Now, if I'm looking at the tape, uh, in my opinion, you know, he was elite in like 2013, 2014. And for the most part, he has had this sort of slow decline in terms of the passing game. But I do feel like his run defense has pretty much been as good as it's always been uh, for the most part. Maybe not quite as good, but it hasn't declined the way that his passing defense has, which is good because let's be honest, uh, the Raiders could really use a guy who can, you know, stop the run. I mean, you have Quentin Jefferson, who is fine, but he's not really someone who I trust to stop the run too much. Also, Jonathan Hankins and Solomon Thomas. So it, they, it's a position of need, right? And you're getting a guy who has some potential. And listen, he might not be great for five years, but you'll worry about that five years from now. So let's get into some tape and let's talk about uh, what he can do well and at least what he did well in 2019. So we'll start off with something like this. Actually, weirdly, the way this worked out is all the plays I'm going to show are against Tampa Bay. I, I didn't mean to do it that way. It just worked out that way. But anyways, yeah, you see what's going to happen. He is currently lined up right there. I've circled him in yellow. And what's really impressive about McCoy and what's always been impressive about McCoy is going to be his first step. He's always had an incredible first step. He Whether it's timing the snap count or maybe he just is quick. My guess is at sometimes both. He's always the first guy moving on the line. Uh, and for Tampa Bay, their right guard is going to be trying to block him. But watch what happens. McCoy's so quick, he just really just blows right by him. And while he doesn't actually make the tackle, he was able to sort of blow that play up. So again, would you like to see him finish and make that play? Sure. But again, I'm not concerned about him not being able to finish and make plays. And the fact that he can still benefit you in just ways like that, I think is good. He can blow the play up sometimes for the Raiders, which they definitely could use on the interior because I don't know if they have that as of right now. Like another thing is a, a play like this. So again, uh, he's going to be going up one-on-one -on -one against a guard right here. And one thing that's interesting is, so for McCoy, he in a large part played well in a 4-3 system, but then Tampa Bay, when they shifted over to a 3-4, that's why they decided to go with Sue. They trusted Sue more as that 3-4 defensive end than McCoy. Uh, so they got rid of McCoy, stuck with Sue. Uh, then McCoy goes to the Panthers. They play 3-4, and he actually does really well in that system. The Raiders tend to play 4-3, so uh, this will be kind of, actually, if anything, more what you would expect to fit his skill set. But anyways, back to this play. Uh, it's interesting, and what's going to happen on this play is really you're going to see how good of he, job he does with his hands. So first, watch him sort of swipe like that, which gives him a pretty good positioning. And while Ali Marpet, who is what McCoy is going up against, Ali Marpet, one of the best guards in the league, but McCoy is doing a great job right here. See how he gets his left arm, and he kind of is grabbing onto Marpet's right wrist. Again, the hands in this, the quick first step 
or what McCoy does so well. And that's stuff that you can still do at age 33. He's not someone that just relies on strength. He's not someone that re relies on speed. He, in a large part, can rely on technique, which is why I think he'll still be able to have some success with the Raiders. He is going to be able to then get through, and he ends up getting this sack on Jameis Winston right there. So again, a really good play, and that's kind of a technique thing more than anything. He's not overpowering, but he has a technique, and as long as he just has enough strength and enough speed, well, then he can use that technique to really help himself out. And one more play, something like this. So he's going to be going up one-on-one -on -one against tight end OJ Howard right here. And when you're going up against a tight end and you're an interior defensive lineman, you have to win this matchup. And McCoy is going to do that. I mean, look, watch how he just sort of overpowers Howard right there, and he is going to be able to run over, get the sack, and again, that's that's sort of power right there, and you expect it. He's going up against a tight end, albeit a good blocking tight end, but still, uh, he it does have the power to make that work, so the fact that McCoy still has this kind of stuff, to me, I think he probably will still have it with the Raiders. The reality of the situation is we don't entirely know how good McCoy can be because we haven't seen him play since 2019. We didn't see him play last year. He was hurt the entire season. So we can't really sit here and say, oh, well, he's definitely going to be good next year, or I don't know if he's going to be good next year. Uh, and that's kind of the, the frustrating thing. But at the same time, this is why NFL teams can have guys come in and do a workout, which is what the Raiders did. They had McCoy do a workout, and allegedly they were impressed. Now, again, I'm always wary with reports because who knows how true those things are. Uh, there's been a thousand reports every year that just are factually wrong, so it's possible that he wasn't that impressive, and they still said, eh, we, we need another body in here, so go ahead. But uh, I think it's a good sign, and the, the fact that they said, you know what, you're at least probably good enough to play. To me, I don't see McCoy as a guy who is going to have, uh, you know, no value to a team. Either he'll be so bad that you, you you just can't have him on the field, or he'll be good enough that you might as well keep him on the field because he can, you know, not just when using you know skill, but also when using technique. And another factor is, hey, you got someone like Cleland Furl who might play on the inside, which that's what a lot of people were talking about. Could he be a guy who plays on the inside? We don't know. It, to some degree, he probably will. Well, now you got a veteran guy who can sort of help him out, which, uh, again, how much does that help? I don't know, but it might help. And the reality is, that, let's be honest, John Gruden has a great history of saying, let's go get that guy, that veteran player and then still having success of him. John Gruden loves his veteran players because he knows McCoy is not going to do something stupid. McCoy knows what he has to do. McCoy is not going to make dumb decisions. McCoy's a smart player. He's a veteran player, and that's why John Gruden likes veteran players. Now, how much does this really move the needle for me? That's a tough question. Um, so if you've been following along in my rankings, I gave uh, both their run defense and their pass rush a tier three and the way it works is there's five tiers tier one is the best tier five is the worst so they were tier three I think you could argue I think the run defense probably is still clearly tier three to me but you can maybe argue this bumps their pass rush up to tier two I think it's close enough because you have guys like Furl and Gakwe and Crosby who are all good players not to mention uh C Carl Nassib who is you know he's really good as well another guy former Tampa Bay Buccaneer now playing for the Raiders just seemingly defensive linemen just go over to play for the Raiders after this uh I don't know that's kind of a, a weird thing but you know I think adding someone who can maybe just get some sort of pressure on the inside if now just one of Jefferson Hankins or Thomas works out now you got a complete defensive line and in fact if you just put Furrow on the inside next to McCoy, now you have Ngakwe and Crosby on the outside, with Nasib being the rotational guy, um, or excuse me, Nasib. I, I always try to say Nasib. I don't know why, but Nasib. Uh, I mean, that's that's a great defensive line, quite frankly. So the, it was a position of weakness, and they have addressed it. That's a it's a good thing for them, and I like this signing. So what do you guys think? What is your opinion on the Gerald McCoy signing? Always love hearing from you, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.